There we go. So we're going to finish up with complex numbers this morning, and we're going to talk about the polar form. Now, if you recall, we have what's called a real axis and an imaginary axis. And we locate complex numbers in this space. So if we have A plus BI, yeah, I'm going to label this real because we're going to need the letter R in just a little bit. Well, it's located at A. Let's see, we do have an I and the I. Now, this makes an angle theta with the real axis. So what we could do is we could turn this into a triangle. With the base A, And the height B. And it makes this angle theta. Now, what we can do, the hypotenuse is going to be A squared plus B squared, and we square root it. We're going to call that R. So again, using that Pythagorean theorem, that's what we're going to get. So over here, let me not go quite so fast. That's the familiar Pythagorean theorem. And then we solve for R, and we're going to keep the positive value, because this time when we are talking about a distance. So we've got that. Now, what else we can do? Now that we have R, we can say that the cosine of theta is A over R. Or we can solve for A, and we'll get R cosine theta is equal to A. I'm going to hang on to this one. Now, likewise, the sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse is B over R. And we can solve for B. And that's our sine theta. We'll hang on to this one too. So let's go back to this A plus BI. Now we know that A is R cosine theta, and B is R sine theta. So replacing A and B, we'll get R cosine theta for A plus R sine theta for B. And what we usually do is we'll put the I here. So it doesn't look like we're taking the sine of theta I. R I sine theta. Then we factor out R.
And so this is going to become the representation, the polar form of A plus B I. So any questions about that? Now let's take a look at something here. So let's do this. Let's convert. Well, let's convert this to pole four. Now, I do want to make a note here. But still, that the tangent of theta, let's go back to this triangle, the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So this is another formula we're going to want to use. And this is the same one we have for polar coordinates. So that being said, well, let's do this conversion. So first off, we could, and this will help with these, let's graph this. It'll give us an idea of what kind of theta we're dealing with. This is your real, and that's your imaginary. This so will have an I here and we'll have a two I there. So the key thing we want to look for. Let's take a look at our theta. Now our theta is going to be an angle in the first quadrant. So that's going to be an observation we're going to use when we figure out the tangent of theta here being b over a. We want to keep that in mind. Theta is an angle in the first, or the terminal side of the first quadrant. All right. So we need r and we need theta. Now r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now for us, a and b are two. So that's gonna be the square root of two squared plus two squared. Or the square root of four plus four. And if we you know, simplify this down, we'll get two square root two. And that's going to be our R. So, so far, so good. But now we need theta. Well, theta, again, is in Q1. 
the terminal side is in Q1. So we want to keep that in mind. Now the tangent of theta is B over A. Or put another way, the tangent of theta is 2 over 2. Or the tangent of theta is equal to 1. And there's different ways you can do this, but you can take your unit circle, look at the angles that have a terminal side in quadrant one, and which one of those angles has a tangent of one. In other words, if you take the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, you get one. Well, the tangent of pi over four which is Q1, gives us 1. So that means theta is pi over 4. Questions about that? All right. So we have theta and we have r. So that means r is 2 radical 2, theta is pi over 4. So r cosine theta, I sine theta, well this will become 2 root 2 cosine pi over 4 plus I sine pi over 4. And that's going to be our answer. Questions about that? All right. So, how's everybody doing this morning? Are you hanging in there? Well, I hope that's a good sign. Um, well, what I want to show you now is something a little different. Um, we're going to kind of go outside the book a bit to do something that's kind of cool. So you'll see this in the future. From Calc 2. So possibly in the summer, possibly next fall. And it's this. The cosine of theta. Let me see here. That is going to be And it's going to alternate on and on forever. So minus theta squared over 2. Now 2 factorial, maybe you haven't seen this before. 2 factorial, 1 times 2. 4 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. That's what factorial means. You just multiply all the numbers from one up to that. Now again, this is a calculus thing. So it's called a Taylor series. And what this says is if you choose a value for theta, say pi over four, then 
this function, it's going to be relatively close. It'll approximate cosine of pi over 4 using, this goes on and on forever. We'll alternate signs here and um, we'll get a, a minus theta to the sixth or a six factorial plus a theta to the eighth over eight factorial. And it'll just go on and on forever. Now for sine. Let's see here. And what I can do, I can send you the link to where I'm drawing these. They might be helpful in the future. And this one's doing the same thing. So we'll have a minus theta cubed plus theta to the fifth, a minus theta to the seventh, a plus theta to the ninth. It'll just go on and on forever. With a cubed, you get a three factorial. With a fifth, you get a five factorial. With a seventh of a seven factorial, and so on. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's recall the cycle of I. Now, I should let you know, this is not something you're going to be tested on. This is just sort of a, a trick. We'll be tested on it in count two. But they'll review it in count two, don't worry. We got this. So that's our cycle of I. So we're going to do some sort of fancy algebra here. Notice that the minus here, well, I squared is equal to minus one. So this cosine theta, we can represent this as where the minus is going to be that I squared. Now this doesn't have a minus, but we can pretend it has a positive one. Well, I to the fourth is equal to positive one. So just for kicks, why not put that in there? And this will go on. Now, sine theta. We're going to do something a little fancy with sine theta. We'll multiply it by i. So if we multiply this by i, we got to multiply everything in here by i. So we distribute the i. There we go. So I know this looks like madness, but trust me. Count two when you get in the Taylor series and study derivatives, it'll make more sense. So now that we have this, now this one, let's do a little work on this one. And this one too. Remember that i cubed is negative i. So we can take this as i sine theta i theta plus i cubed. So this minus i becomes an i cubed theta cubed. over three factorial.
Now let me show you something else. I to the fifth is I times I to the fourth. Now I to the fourth is one. And then one times I is I. So what we can do here is take this I and we can call it I to the fifth. There's that fifth. Excuse me. So let me recap what we have. So cosine of theta has become one plus I squared theta squared in that two factorial plus I do the fourth, theta do the fourth, four factorial, and then sine, I sine, is I theta, I cubed, theta cubed, three factorial, so I do the fifth, theta to the fifth, five factorial, goes on. All right, now what we can do is we can rewrite these like so. So what we're going to say is this. We've only done this with really two terms of the cosine and okay, we've worked with maybe three terms of the sine. But what about these infinite signs? And some of these out here have minuses. Well it turns out if we use the same trick with i, we can remove all these minuses and say for like, we'll get an i theta to the ninth over nine factorial. Or on this one, we'll get an i theta to the ninth over nine factorial, or an i theta to the twentieth over twenty factorial. We'll be able to do the same trick with the i's to remove the minus signs, and uh, we'll get terms like this. So we could keep doing this forever. So any questions so far? All right. So here comes a, the, sort of what we're getting at. 
cosine theta plus i sine theta will be equal to 1 plus i theta squared over 2 factorial plus i theta to the fourth over 4 factorial. Now everything's going to be positive because we're going to keep doing that i trick all the way down. Plus i theta plus i theta cubed plus i theta to the fifth And again, everything will become positive as we do this I trick. And if we combine things, what we'll get is 1 plus I theta plus I theta squared 2 factorial plus I theta cubed over 3 factorial plus I theta to the fourth, four factorial, plus I theta to the fifth, over five factorial, and on and on and on. So, questions about this? All right. So, Here's another thing for calculus. But it turns out e to the x as a Taylor series, and that's what this is called, is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial and on and on and on. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with i theta. So we'll get e to the i theta is 1 plus i theta plus i theta squared over 2 factorial plus i theta cubed over 3 factorial plus i theta to the fourth over 4 factorial plus i theta to the fifth over 5 factorial and on and on and on. And remember what this was equal to, we came up with this by taking the cosine of theta and adding i sine theta. We took the series for cosine, we added it to the series of sine. In fact, I'll, I'll emphasize that point.
So I'm just working backwards through everything that we've done. And so this is what's called Euler's formula. So this is the, uh, before we combined things, this is before we did our I trick, and this is the series for cosine, there's the I, and this is the series for sine. Again, these series coming from Calc 2. So questions about that? So here's the moral of the story. And again, this is not something you're going to be tested on, not in this class. But what it's going to do, it's going to make our lives a lot easier. Okay, getting there was hard. But now that we have this, is it okay if I erase this? Is there anyone still copying this down? is we have this a plus bi which is r cosine theta plus i sine theta is now r e to i theta Now, what this is going to do is this is going to let us come up with formulas for multiplication, for division, and for taking roots. And it's going to make our lives a lot easier in doing this. Um, now, we've done multiplication. Let's see here. Have our absolute value. Double check. You've got your addition, subtraction. Um, if you recall from algebra, we can multiply complex numbers and we can divide complex numbers um, using techniques from algebra, but we want to go over the way of doing it in polar form. So we're going to look at multiplication and division in polar form. So let's take a look at multiplication. So let's say we have a complex number, Z1. Well, this would be R1. And there's a theta 1. Again, the 1 being a subscript to describe Z1. Well, we can write this now as R1 e to the I theta 1. Now let's think about Z2. write it as r2 e to the i theta 2. So now that we have this, z1 times z2, we can call this r1 e to the i theta 1 times r2 e to the i theta 2. And this will be R1, R2, e to the i theta 1 plus i theta 2. Oh, here, maybe I'm skipping a step here. We'll just rearrange things. And 
I'm going to write your copy now. I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little more compact. So the next step is it will have R1, R2, e to the i theta 1 plus i theta 2. We add the exponents. We can factor out the i. And now, if we want to think of it like this, oh, that whole thing alpha, some angle plus another angle gives us angle alpha. We can call this R1, R2, cosine of alpha. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm skipping a step here. E to the i alpha, or r1, r2. Now e to the i alpha will be cosine alpha plus i sine of alpha. But we know what alpha is. It's theta one plus theta two. So what we'll get r1 R2 times the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 plus theta 2. So what we're going to get is this. If we have two complex numbers, written in polar form, like this, then their product is going to be this. In fact, let me use some brackets. And so that's what we're going to get. So if we have a Z1 with an R1 and a theta 1, a Z2 with an R2 and a theta 2, to figure out the product of these two complex numbers, we just multiply the R's, add the thetas, and we have a cosine of the sum of thetas, an I sine of the sum of thetas. And that's it. So let's take a look at an example. Let's see here. So let's say Z1 is 4 cosine of 15 degrees plus I sine 15 degrees. 
15 degrees. Z2 7 cosine degrees plus I sine of 25 degrees. So if we're going to do the product, Z1 times Z2 is R1, R2. Cosine theta one plus theta two plus I sine of theta one plus theta two. And now we substitute. And so what we'll get is 28 times the cosine of 40 degrees plus I sine 40 degrees. And that's going to be our answer. And that's it. Questions about that. So let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have Z one is one plus I and Z two is going to be two plus two I. Now let's say they want this done at pole coordinates. So we got to convert these first. So Z one. We need our R. So that's going to be our R. Now, what about theta? Well, again, let's graph this. Let's see where this thing is. So it's going to be again in the first quadrant, or the terminal side will be in the first quadrant. We always choose this as our initial side. So this is our angle theta. So tangent theta, which is B over A, or tangent theta, which will be one over one, but a tangent theta is equal to one. So now this one we can, we can use using the unit circle. So tangent of pi over four gives us one. So theta is going to be pi over four. So what we're going to get for C1 
cosine pi over 4 pi sine of pi over 4. So that's going to be our z1. So I'm going to write that up here so I have it. So that's our z1. So z2 Well, again, for z2, r will be the square root of a squared plus b squared, or r is going to be square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, 4 plus 4, square root of 8, or 2 root 2. So for theta, again, I recommend graphing it. And we've done this one before. It's going to be right here. And again, theta is in the first quadrant. So what we can do and again it's going to be pi over 4 Get that for our theta. So for z2, r is 2 red 2, and theta was pi over 4. So I'm just going to write it up here just to have it. Right. So now we've done our conversions. Now let's figure out the product. So Z1 times Z2. It's going to be R1, R2, cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Or, we need some more room, root 2, 2 root 2, cosine, pi over 4 plus pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4 plus pi over 4. Now root 2 times root 2 is 2 and then that gives us 2 times 2 is 4. We're going to get 4 on the outside and then on the inside we're going to have cosine pi over 4 plus pi over 4 pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Now let's double check that real quick here. All right. So that's going to be our answer. Questions about that? All right. Division.
So division, again, let's get some complex numbers here. Polar form. So again, we can rewrite these. This will be R E to the I theta one. This will be R two E to the I theta two. So we can use this Euler representation and come up with the formula. So Z one, Z2. So I'm just going to take the ratio and um, simplify. Let me make sure they're doing Z1 over Z2 and not Z2 over Z1. Okay, they are. So what we're going to get R1 e to the i theta 1, R2 e to the i theta 2. And of course, we're assuming Z2 is not equal to 0. Or we'll get R1 or R2 times E to the I theta 1, E to the I theta 2. Or what we're going to get, R1 over R2, and then using our rule for exponents, I theta 1 minus I theta 2, factor out the I, So there we go. Now again, we can call that alpha. So we have R1 over R2 e to the i alpha. And then using our Euler formula again, R1, R2, cosine alpha plus I sine alpha. But now in this case, alpha is theta 1 minus theta 2. So we get R1, R2, cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 minus theta 2. And so this is the formula we're going to use. Z1 divided by Z2. Questions about that. So let's do an example. And again, the Euler formula you're not going to be tested on. It's just a way of working with polar form that when it comes to deriving these formulas is much easier. Though you do have to put up with the whole uh, derivation using these Calc 2 series, these different ways of representing sine and cosine that we learn about from Calc 2. But that's another story. All right, so let's say we have this.
So now what we're going to do is do the quotient. Z1 over Z2 is R1 over R2 cosine theta1 minus theta2 plus I sine theta1 minus theta2. Or in other words, 50 divided by 10 times the cosine plus 80 degrees minus 20 degrees plus I sine 80 degrees minus 20 degrees. So what we'll get is 5 times the cosine 60 degrees plus I sine 60 degrees. And that's going to be our answer. Now for this, what's going to happen don't evaluate the cosine or sine of 60. Just leave it as it is. Because you might be tempted, oh, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And then sine of 60 degrees is rad 3 over 2. And then multiply through by 5. What you will do is you'll get a rectangular representation of the complex number. We want to keep it in the polar representation. So that means we won't evaluate the cosine and the sine. We just leave them that way. So questions about that. So that's the formula for division. Now how about this? Powers. Now again, let's take a Z. It's R cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now, again, we can say this is equal to R E to the I theta. So Z to the N will be R E to the I theta to the M. Distribute this as an exponent, R to the N, E I theta to the M. Use our multiplication rule for exponents. We'll get R to the N, E, I to the N theta, in keeping the I on the outside. Now, this though, that's going to be, call that alpha. So we get R to the N, E to the I. Alpha. And then we'll get, using our formula, cosine alpha plus I sine alpha. And then replacing alpha. That's going to be our formula for C to the N. So let's say we have something like this.
And let's say we cube this. Well, what this means is we take z cubed will be r cubed cosine of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta or 2 cubed cosine of 3 times 10 degrees plus i sine of 3 times 10 degrees or we'll get 8 cosine 30 degrees plus i sine 30 degrees. And that's it. Questions about that? So we have one more to go, and I might have to go a little bit over time to do the example for this one. It has to do with roots. And roots can be a little time consuming. Now I am recording the lecture, so if you have to go to another lecture, um, I should be done before nine o'clock. But if you do have to go to another lecture, I am recording it and I will be posting it. So let's talk about roots. So again, R, oh, sorry, Z. R cosine theta, I sine theta. But, and we know this from before, you can also add multiples of 2 pi. And you'll get the same location in space. It's the same thing. Adding a multiple of 2 pi to theta, at least for sine and cosine, really doesn't change anything. I mean, you'll just sort of end up right back to where you started. The same with complex numbers as well. So if you have a complex number here, and then you go a rotation of a full circle or 2 pi, you're right back to where you started. So, Like the same thing. So we could throw in a 2 pi k. And again, k is a integer. So what we're going to do though. Again, let's do this, all this alpha. So we'll get R cosine alpha plus I sine of alpha. Or R E to the I alpha. But we know what alpha is. It's going to be R e to the i theta plus 2 pi k. So in the end, we can represent z as this. So this is what we're going to do. The nth root of z. Well, from algebra, we know we can represent this as z to the 1 over n. Or is r e to the i theta plus 2 pi k to the 1 over n. Now, again, we're going to distribute this as an exponent.
And then we'll distribute this on the inside. I'll give us theta over n plus two pi k. And this is going to be for our nth root of z. And let me make one more note here. We do have a limit on k. As long as k is smaller than n minus 1, or smaller than n, I should say. I don't know if you can see that. But k is going to be smaller than n. And so far, what we're going to be considering, and let me just double check something here. We're assuming that n is positive in this. So, so far, I would make that point. It looks like we're, we are assuming that n is going to be positive. So but we'll go with that for now. Let me just double check real quick. Yeah, we're treating n as positive. So let's do an example. I'm just going to follow the example in the text and because um, we're going to run out of time. So um, the example I'm going to follow is example nine. So let's say we have this. And let's say we want to find we're going to find the fourth root of z. And this will be the last example, but that'll be it for today. So what this means, if we think about our formula for roots. Oh, sorry, I forgot to, this is going to be, I forgot to convert from Euler to our actual formula. So we have z, the nth root of z. We had this, r to the 1 over n, e to the i theta over n, plus 2 pi k over n. Let me finish this. Again, we can call this our alpha. r to the 1 over n. This will be cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Skipping a little step here, and you could call this r to the 1 over n e to the alpha. And then we'll convert this back into cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And so this is the formula we're actually going to use. It would be the cosine of theta over n plus 2 pi k over n plus i sine theta over n plus 2 pi k over n. Oh, 
So that's the actual formula we're going to use. And again, K the numbers zero, one, two, to n minus one. So this is the actual root formula we're going to use, not in the Euler form. We had to convert that out. All right, we'll do this. So we're looking for the fourth roots of this. So what that means, the way we do these calculations, and here, I'm going to rewrite this formula. It's a little bit, no pun intended, complex. So the nth root of z, r to the 1 over the n, or nth root of r, now use brackets, cosine theta over n plus 2 pi k over n plus i sine theta over n plus 2 pi k over n. Ooh, there's an i sine in here. And again, k is equal to 0, 1, 2, n minus 1. So how do we use this thing? Well, r to the 1 over n is easy. So r to the 1 over n. Well, r is 16. Now we're talking the fourth root. So that's going to be 16 to the 1 fourth. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 16. So if you multiply four twos, you'll get 16. So that means the fourth root of 16 is 2. So we got 2 for 1 over n. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated. Now, we know n is 4. So this is where all these roots are going to come from. So since n is 4, we're going to calculate this. But using k is 0, then k is 1, then k is 2, and k is 3. So we're going to get four roots from this thing. So let's start with k zero. Well, this will be two times cosine, and then we have 120 divided by four plus two pi times zero over four. So that's our cosine plus i sine, and again, theta over n, or 120 over 4, plus 2 pi times 0 divided by 4. So this will give us the k equals 0 root. So what we're going to get is 2 times the cosine. Now 120 divided by 4 is 30. Plus, and this is times 0, so it's going to be 0. Plus i sine. And again, 120 divided by 4 is 30. And this is 2 pi times 0, that's a good 0. And so what that's going to give us cosine of 30 degrees plus I sine of 30 degrees. So this is the K equals zero root. All right. Now, I'm going to make a note. 
You don't have to use two pi. Again, two pi, since we're working with degrees, we can let it be 360 degrees. That's going to be easier. So knowing that, let's go to K1. So again, 2 times the cosine of 120 divided by 4, because this is an n, it's not a k, plus 360 times, but now k is not 0, it's 1. There's 1, again, divided by n, which is 4, plus i sine 120 divided by 4, plus 360 degrees, times k divided by n, so what this will become is 2 times the cosine, again 30 degrees, 120 divided by 4, plus, now 360 times 1 is 360, 360 divided by 4 is 90. Or 2 times cosine of 120 degrees plus i sine of 120 degrees. And that's going to be k equals 1. Now we're running out of time. So for K2, I'm going to have to just let you look at those in the text. It's on page 785. But you're going to use the exact same procedure. And so let me give you what the answers of those are, but then show you the significance of these roots. So for K equals 3, and again, N is still 4. N doesn't change. For k equals 3, what you're going to get is 2 cosine 210 degrees plus i sine 210 degrees. And then for k equals 4, We'll get 2 cosine of 300 degrees, I sine of 300 degrees. So there's a significance to this, and let me show you what this is. This is why I'm sort of just giving you the answers here. I don't want to run out of time on that. Let me show you. So if we take the fourth root of z, what we're going to get So if we were to graph these, what we would get
we're going to get four roots. And this is because we're taking a fourth root. And these roots, they're all evenly spaced. So when you take these roots, this is what you're going to get. So you're going to get four roots. As you're doing fourth roots, you get four evenly spaced roots. And that's what they're going to look like in the graph. So just wanted to put that out there. Other than that, that's it. Um, I might do another example like this later just to go through it step by step. But um, we do have, at least we've covered the formulas that you can use for 7.5. And if you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, have a wonderful day.